Hey y'all, in this part one video, I'll be showing you how I drafted this kid's vest and skirt. So for the vest pattern, you'll need a shirt. The shirt is a 5T and my daughter, she wears a 5T or well, 5'6", but it turned out smaller because I forgot to ask Seema Lawrence extra room where I was supposed to leave extra room at. Again, I forgot. That's my fault. Just remember to ask Seema Lawrence. Now back to this tutorial, you just want to look at your shirt, the front side, and you want to fold it in half. And then you just want to fold the sleeves back as well. Yes, I made another mistake as well because I was supposed to bring where this arrow is pointed at. I was supposed to bring that down some because this shirt right here, this is a fitted shirt. So it's okay for the armhole to be up some because it's a fitted shirt. But that's not the look that I was going for. I was going for a vest. So for the vest, since you wanted to have more room, you would bring that armhole position down some more. This piece that I'm touching right here, that's obviously the back and it's always gonna be higher than the front. So we're gonna push that back some so we can make our front pattern. I got this and I placed it on the board and then I just traced all around it where the fold is. I put it on the edge and then I traced everywhere else. Um, and then you want to leave seam allowance right there where the armhole is. You want to leave seam allowance everywhere. But again, I forgot to leave seam allowance. And that was a big mistake. As y'all can see, I'm making the mistakes for y'all so y'all don't have to make the same mistakes. So make sure y'all listen to me. I'm probably going to do like a little summary. Not a summary, but a little main points so y'all don't have to make the same mistakes that I made. Right here, I'm just placing it on the edge and then I'm just tracing it out. So we've traced out the front pattern. Now we're just going to go up some so we can draw the back neckline again. The back neckline is always going to be higher than the front. However, how you want it, just measure up some. This basically is a front and back pattern since it has the front and back neckline. So we're just going to cut this out. I made it a little higher. It's a last minute thing. It's fine. But we're going to get that pattern that we made and we're going to place it on the edge of another paper or pattern paper, whatever you have. And then we're going to trace that out. Once we trace that out, pattern that's on that new board, that is our back pattern because it's a high neckline. So that's our back pattern. Then once we're done with that, we're going to cut the high neckline off. And once you do that, we're going to be left with a low neckline. And that right here, this right here, that will be our front pattern. Now I'm tracing the pattern to make it the back pattern. Then I'm labeling it and I'm cutting the high neckline off to make it just the front pattern. I'm cutting this out and that right here, that's our new back pattern. And then we have both the front and back patterns. The front pattern, you'll place it on the fold. You'll cut it, but you'll cut it down the middle. So it'll be two pieces. The back pattern, you'll cut it on the fold, but you do not cut it. It's only going to be one whole piece. So I recorded it and I'm telling y'all to ask Stephen Lawless, but I forgot to ask Stephen Lawless and I even freaking wrote it right here so I won't forget, but I still forgot. So please remember to ask Stephen Lawless so it doesn't get super little. I'm going to do the skirt pattern. It's super simple, super easy. For her skirt, I actually made the pattern. Um, you don't have to. You can just get a skirt and copy that. Copy that pattern, but I had took three measurements, her waist to knee, then I took how long I want the skirt to be, so the skirt length, and then I took her waist circumference. Y'all, I really don't know why I folded this. You can just draw the pattern on the edge of your pattern paper without actually folding it. Her waist to knee measurement was 16 inches, and her skirt length, how, how long I actually wanted it, it was 13 and a half. I didn't want her skirt to be super long. And then her waist circumference, like around her waist, was 22 inches. So we're going to take her waist circumference, which is 22 inches, and we're going to divide that by four, and that's five and a half. So I plot the five and a half from that edge or from that corner, and that's going to be our waistline. Now it's time to plot our skirt length or how long we want the skirt to be, and that was 13 and a half inches. So from the waistline, we go down 13 and a half inches. Again, I forgot to add seam allowance. I should have added one inch to the bottom for the hem and one inch at the top so I can add the elastic, but I was so ready to make this freaking outfit and I was so ready to record that I forgot. So make sure, make sure <laughs> again to freaking add seam allowance. Now it's time to connect the waistline point and the skirt length point. You just want to draw a straight line from each point. I kind of wanted it to be like a pencil skirt, but not really a pencil skirt. Um, I didn't want a straight skirt for her. So at the skirt length line, I bring it in maybe about an inch and then I connected the, um, the points. And then that is my skirt. It's going to look weird and boxy because kids, they don't have any curves and that's fine, obviously. So that's the skirt and I'm labeling the skirt. 
and uh, those are basically all my patterns except the collar and i do the collar last like after i sew everything together i make the collar last because i don't want it to be too long or too short but i promise to get the collar measurement is really easy all you do after you sew everything together you just measure around the neck like measure everything around like where you want the collar to be and then you're going to add one inch because it's going to be half an inch on both sides and then how tall you want the collar to be just say you want the collar to stand up three inches I'm sorry y'all had to like bring in some type of visuals. So let's say this yellow rectangle is a fabric. The fabric is folded. So it's going to be three inches on one side and then three inches on the other side, which is going to equal to six. But we need seam allowance. Remember to add seam allowance. So we're going to add one inch. So once we cut that fabric out or that rectangle out, all together, it's going to be seven inches. So it's going to be seven inches wide and however long you want the color to be, that's how long it's going to be plus one inch because we need to add seam allowance. I did it right here, but I ended up doing it the way that I told you how I did it. That's how I did it. I didn't use this because I was like, that's too short. So I just measured it after I sewed everything together. Then I measured the color and then made my pattern from there. So those are all the patterns, the front, back, and skirt, and the collar. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And y'all stay tuned for part two. Bye!